Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Stably Minerals Update for the 6th of July, 2022. In this presentation, you're hearing general advice only. We haven't taken into consideration your personal financial objectives or needs. Trading and investing involves risk. Past returns do not mean make the same in the future. The Spectrum Line Proprietary Limited is an authorized representative of Glen Eagle Securities, which holds an Australian financial services license. Okay, hi, Chris. Uh, great to see you again. It's been a while since we've done an interview. Um, obviously, a lot has happened. And uh, we're very keen to hear from you, you know, what's going on and what your, what your plans are. So I'll let you talk, and then I've got a whole stack of questions to ask you from the, uh, from the audience. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, so we finished our resource drilling a couple of months ago, went into an interpretation and, and resource estimation phase. Um, we managed to get that out uh, Tuesday, a fortnight ago. And... As it happens, it was the worst day in the market in probably a decade. Um, unfortunately, I think certain shareholders or market commentators felt that because the share price went down on the day that we announced the mineral resource estimate, that it was a, a bad estimate or that the, the market didn't like it. Um, I don't think that's the case. I think we we're just caught up in that particular sentiment of the day. Um, the resource estimate in terms of my expectations was probably spot on in terms of grade, 1.23% uh, copper and 0.23 grams gold was pretty much where I thought it would land. Um, in terms of tonnage, uh, I was expecting somewhere probably between six and 7 million tons. It ends up being 9.23. So um, admittedly, a portion of that is, is the, last couple of hits in hole 173 and 182 at depth that added another 1.7 million tons, but still it exceeded my expectation in terms of tons as well. So I'm very comfortable with the resource estimate. It was done uh, with the assistance of a couple of independent uh, experts. Um, the Mitchell River Group helped us with the, the geologists on site do the wireframing. So that was, I think that's very well done and reflects the geology very nicely. Um, and then the estimation was done by Cube Consulting. And, and look, we've had a relationship with Cube for um, almost two decades now. We know that their resource estimates are, in my view, probably going to be on a little bit of the conservative side, but that stands you in good stead should you go into production on, on this resource that it's going to perform to expectations. So. Um, I don't think that uh, the, the estimate is overdoing it. And in fact, I think there are areas where we probably could improve on the estimate with respect to the, uh, the density, um, I think is probably a little bit light to my mind in terms of the style of mineralization, um, which probably underestimates the tons by 10%, maybe. Um, but uh, otherwise, look, a, a very solid resource. Um, and a very solid foundation for the company indeed. So uh, look, other than that, um, you know, we got to a low cash position uh, because we had told the market that we wouldn't come to market until the resource was out. And in fact, had we come to market prior to the resource being out, I, I think that there would be a great deal of skepticism and suspicion um, from investors as to why we were coming to market without having put out the resource estimate. So we were in a, sort of a, between a rock and a hard place there. So the estimate had to come out, comes out on the worst day in the market in 10 years. Um, we get belted and then the market basically says, well, look, these guys need to raise money. So we're gonna belt them down a little bit more. And then, um, you know, to get the, the capital raising away, uh, a couple of the, the major investors in the UK basically through term sheets in our face that were suggesting that other copper companies had come to market recently with a 25% discount to their share price, which, you know, when you're starting at 20 cents and, and they're saying, okay, well, we're not in unless you're going to give us a 25% discount down to 15 cents. Well, that just, you know, add, rub salt into the wound. So it is what it is. We did a, a small capital raising that wasn't too dilutive. Um, we'll be able to get uh, some meaningful drilling done, and we've got some good exploration opportunities in that respect. Um, we get to complete the transaction on the farm. Uh, we're looking at financing most of that in a like a, a 
10% note. So just um, taking uh, some debt on that secured against that property because that frees up our capital to do value adding activities rather than tying it up in property. And we pay 10% um, per year on the value of that note and, and secured against the property. So it's a pretty attractive opportunity for somebody who just wants a, a bit of yield uh, secured against property. So that's pretty much where we're at, you know, our, our financial situation. Um, with respect to other opportunities, um, we've got a lot of expiration results just having come through. Uh, there's a big review happening um, in, in July. Uh, and we'll get on the ground with, with drills again in September. So, you know, we've, I think in this market, uh, the value of, of the money that we've just raised has, has been quite painful to shareholders. So it really sharpens your perspective in terms of where you're going to spend your money in to greatest effect. So I'm um, looking forward to the expiration program, you know, between September and Christmas. Okay. All right. So can I, well, we've got a whole bunch of questions and that um, uh, various uh, shareholders have been asking. Um, ultimately, the, as you say, the MRE came in pretty much spot on with your expectations. And I know you, you're in a position where you can't talk about the, the retail value of that, but um, I mean, on a back of the envelope type of thing, it's well in excess of a billion dollars worth of minerals in the ground. What sort of margin do you have though for um, developing it? Like, is it fair to say that, you know, somebody who goes in to develop at a mining company, they're going to make about a 10% margin, 20% margin. Is there something like that you can share with us? Yeah, look, um, that, those sorts of numbers would be the product of a scoping study. We haven't completed the scoping study. Just excuse me, post COVID last week, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, look, uh, it would be premature for me to put numbers like that out. But what I will say is that um, the, the quality of the resource and the grade is, is attractive. Um, also, the very large chuck site blanket above that really uh, exposes us to the copper price upside. And at the moment, the copper price has dipped because everything in the world has dipped. But I don't think that the thematic in the context of decarbonization of global economies, the electrification, uh, you know, solar energy, wind power, um, uh, all of the copper required for that, uh, that major shift in, in global economies, that thematic has not changed. And so I think that what we're going to see moving forward is that the copper price really, in my mind, uh, we need to be around um, somewhere around $10 a pound to, as an incentive pricing for new production to come into the market. At the moment, you know, we're, we're sitting below $4 a pound as the price has most recently dropped. It was up around four seventy, But at the moment with, in the mining industry, where costs are going throughout the industry in terms of labor, in terms of diesel, in terms of everything, power, um, uh, reagents, uh, it's very difficult at the moment because it's such a moving feast. Um, you hear stories in the industry where had you ordered a ball mill uh, for the process plant um, three months ago, uh, it would have been at a price 40% less than what if you, if you ordered it today. So it's such a quickly changing piece. It's very difficult to put a finger on that margin because co the cost side of things has just gone crazy. And now we've just been squeezed with the copper price coming down, which I think is a, a temporary aberration because it simply cannot you know, continue because you need incentive pricing for new production to come on because we just don't have enough copper production. So that's a long-winded way of saying, look, it's a very dynamic environment, both on times of, in terms of commodity price and in terms of production cost environments. Um, I think, you know, when we're looking at developing this asset, whether we look at production within three, four, five years or something like that, then the, the cost and price commodity price environment will be entirely different to what it is today. So it's, it's just one of those periods in time where you just have to, to, to be frank, you just have to pull your head in a little bit and, and let the market come to you as opposed to trying to rush into production. And we've seen, you know, 
people like Dacian, for example, having to shut down production because they just could not get a lid on their costs. Um, and so that's just the environment that the industry is in at the moment. And, and, and people are reassessing where they're at uh, from a production point of view and from a cost point of view. Okay, so based on that, then I know you're, you've mentioned many times in the past, um, your intention to take uh, the Thursday's Gossin into production. And yeah. it was sort of a four year time frame to get uh, approvals and government and community uh, you know, acceptance and permission, et cetera. Where are you at now? Like, are you in the, are you open to a JV? Are you open to potentially selling Thursday's Gossin or are you still full steam ahead with plans to develop or has that all been sort of slowed down in the interim? <clears throat> no, I think, okay. so. So whilst we're not making the development decision now, we can still progress our studies. And, and I think the probably the best thing that we can do in this market is to make the project more robust. So that is, and having in reference to my previous comments in terms of the cost of this round of, of capital raising that we've just done is expensive by anybody's quantum. Um, with the fees that we've paid to raise the money, it works out to be about a 30% discount on an already discounted share price. So that really sharpens your view in terms of where you're going to get the best bang for your buck. But from, from our perspective, the best thing that we can do in this market environment is make the project more robust. And that, that really means finding more good grade copper material in the near vicinity of where we would like to develop the project, where the process plant would be, and that that adds greatest value at this point in the market is to add more material, which increases our revenue, particularly in the early stages of the project during capital payback. That's where we see our greater sensitivity. And we do see low hanging fruit in that respect. So rather than rushing headlong towards a, a production and approvals environment, we think that the best opportunity is to uh, go after that low hanging fruit in terms of near mine opportunities. So is that specifically digging deep or drilling deeper, looking for porphyry or just trying to shore up that, that southerly plunge at Thursday's Gossin? What exactly are you referring to? Yeah, so probably uh, more looking at a couple of the, the near uh, Thursday's Gossin opportunities. There's a, a, a very strong soil copper geochemical anomaly to the south, about uh, two kilometers to the south of Thursday's Gossin that we haven't done uh, much in the way of work on at all because we it's the same farmer that had that paddock to the south of the railway. Um, we've now demonstrated that we can successfully operate on their property and uh, in that area south of the railway. And then another block of theirs is where this anomaly is. So I would be hopeful that we'd be able to arrange access to that for the first time in about 10 years. So that's one of the opportunities. There's another one uh, up near the farm that we've agreed to purchase, we call the Northern Fletcher. That's got some geochem. It's got Meltramafic on it with, you know, anomalous geochem on the contact. So that's an, about a kilometer and a half up to the northwest. So um, there are a number of emerging exploration opportunities in the immediate vicinity. Uh, we'll be detailing uh, those in an announcement that summarizes all of that once we've got all that um, uh, exploration uh, geochem back uh, from the lab. I think there's one outstanding job. So that's to come. Um, but you, your other question along the lines of would be we, we'd be willing to discuss a joint venture. Um, we would be willing to consider potentially bringing somebody in to test for the deeper porphyry. Um, and we've got a couple of groups that are, are, are keen at looking at that opportunity. Um, and that if, if they don't hit the deeper porphyry, then we could benefit from the information that those deeper drill holes generate in, in any case. Um, but in this sort of environment, I just can't justify with our current cash balance spending in excess of a million dollars per deep drill hole to look for that porphyry. So bringing somebody in to do that for us um, is something that we would consider. Right, okay. and. With respect to the farm, obviously that decision to purchase that um, land, I think it was 500 hectares or something from memory. Um, uh, 500 not, acres. 500 acres, sorry. That's not the southern paddock that everyone that we've been talking about, is it? No, no, that's right. And, and 
you know, there are some commercial discussions going on with respect to that southern paddock, but I can't say much more. Right. Okay. So the farm that you you've agreed to purchase and are going through with that purchase, uh, when is that uh, meant to be settling? Uh, on the fifteenth of August. Right. Okay. And with respect to the uh, the finance that you've organized, the two and a half million at ten percent per year, do you have a yep. date that that must be paid off by, or can you just keep paying the ten percent? Yeah, the- we can roll. We have an election to roll it over. You, okay, so, so you're not under any pressure to come up with the two and a half million in, in the next few years, at least. No, that's right. And so it's 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 far more palatable, I think, to pay a coupon of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars per year rather than having two and a half million dollars of our money tied up in the farm. Right. Um, do you still think that was a good idea to go after this farm, given the uh, the situation we're now in? Look, I think it it, it is the correct decision in a long-term strategic position. The, the, one of the rationales was, um, yes, it, it, it's in terms of a development scenario, it will be what we would consider an impacted property. And we didn't want somebody new coming into the neighborhood who may cause us grief in terms of uh, our desire to develop the, the, the operation. So, better that we control our destiny. Um, we can put that farm into production uh, in terms of adjustment or, or, or uh, you know, tenant farmers sort of thing, but we just didn't want anybody living there. Right, okay. Um, so I'm just going through some of the questions now. Uh, okay, so with Tour West, what's the focus now with Tour West? Will that be sort of put to the side while you focus on these other areas closer to uh, Thursday's Gossam? Yeah, that's right. And look, uh, Tour West, you know, it's 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 an interesting prospect. It, it for for me, it says, look, it's completely blind. It's undercover. We've discovered it with no surface expression whatsoever. So it says that our targeting methodology works. I think the trouble with Tour West is that it looks like too simple a system to me. So the a, a proper porphyry system has at least three, maybe four phases of overprinting mineralization. And, and that gets you from the sort of 0.2% coppers up to the you know, 0.6s, 0.7s, where you, and then you get some molly or some gold credits to have those overprinting phases. Tour West to me looks like it's too simple, just the sing- one phase of porphyry mineralization. And as a, as a consequence, it's probably never gonna get there in terms of grade. It just doesn't seem to have those multiple phases or the intensity of alteration. So Tor is something that, you know, is a, what we would call in the industry a technical success. So we've discovered a por- porphyry undercover, but it's probably not gonna get there from a commercial perspective. It's 25 kilometers away. So it, 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 it's really not part of the, the Thursday's Gossam kind of thinking. Um, and as a consequence, we may consider subject to uh, an expiration review that's happening next month to offer that also up for, for um, joint venture. Right, okay. Um, so from a cash flow point of view, clearly um, you've raised this $4 million and you're doing the SPP for another one and a half. So that'll give you about five and a half million. Uh, and there was a couple of million, I think from memory, uh, left in the, uh, the kitty from you know, up till now anyhow especially since you don't have to spend the money on the land. How then will you be focusing that funds? Is it primarily just on drilling? Will there be other um, exercises? I mean, and how long do you think that, that those funds are gonna last? Yeah, look, so- Before capital term, Yeah, sure. It, in terms of um, where that money will be spent, <clears throat> it'll be spent in, in some resource drilling as in, the Cayley load at depth, filling out the, the really good intercepts that we had in holes 173 and 182, for example. Um, and uh, some drilling at um, the Carroll's VMS over near Ararat. <clears throat> we haven't seen in that style of deposit, but typically it's a black smoker, like it, it exhaled onto the sea floor and then it's been turned up on its side. What we haven't seen is the exhalation point where <clears throat> those hot brines carrying sulfides 
come onto the, the, into the ocean at the, near the sea floor. And where that occurs, typically you have a higher grade core with a thicker mineralized zone. Um, we haven't seen that yet at Carroll's. And so I think the drilling at Carroll's will be targeted looking for that thicker, higher grade mineralization. And, and, what, and in, what we'll be looking for as an indicator is the footwall feeder zone. So subsea floor, there's a whole alteration system that's relatively well understood. And so if we can get into that and recognize it, <clears throat> then we've got a good shot at identifying where that thicker uh, sulfide mound would be uh, in, in the profile. So that's uh, the two resources that and what we'd like to do at both of those. But otherwise, as mentioned, I think it's the, it's the near Thursdays Gosson exploration priorities like the Northern Flexure Junction One and uh, some recent soil anomalies that are being generated even further to the south that have never been tested um, or even recognized for that matter. So that near mine stuff, if you want to call it that, is really going to be the focus. Right, and how, so the, right now you can't be drilling because it's winter, I'm assuming, right? So you, you're not- That's right, so we'll okay. resume in September. Right, and so therefore, how long do you think the funds that you'll have will allow you to keep drilling for? Like to the end of the year, into in, next year? Into, into, into the first quarter of next year. Right, so you, then another capital raise you'll be expecting to do towards the end of this year, early next year. Yeah, we've got uh, existing capacity because we haven't used our 7.1a capacity um, uh, under the listing rules, which is an additional 10% issuance capacity. But really, what we'd be looking for is uh, an improvement in the share price, an improvement in market conditions. Um, the in intention in this current capital raise was to minimize the dilution at these prices and just give us enough to do meaningful programs and get us through to a point in the market, you know, say at the end of this year, early next year, where markets have improved and the whole copper thematic has come back as opposed to this capitulative selling that we've seen uh, of, of late. Yeah. Now, obviously, that time frame could be pretty tight, right? Unless, you know, we all aware that, you know, we, we could be looking at a year plus before the market sort of starts to uh, recover again. So. Um, you, you will you go back to the market in a you know, potentially similar capital raise scenario where you're you know getting screwed on the price, but you just have to do it, or do you think you'd slow down and just you know pull up stumps for a little while and wait to uh, see if the market improves? Yeah, look, I think it's a balance between the two. Yes, we we do have an expectation that the market will improve, but I think we do still need to do value adding programs, and we need to keep progressing the story. So I don't think it's a case of of sitting back on our laurels and, and just waiting for, for the market to come to us. We still need to be progressing the project. Um, our intention is, and, and we've had some, a good degree of appetite uh, in recent calls with investor groups overseas, you know, people who are really interested in that, that bigger copper thematic. Um, so it would be our intention um, probably in October, Peter and I would go over to London and North America and have initial discussions with those groups and looking to do uh, a raise whereby a couple of those really substantial uh, investor groups are coming into the register on a meaningful basis. And as we say, uh, we are hopeful and, and pretty confident that the pricing environment is going to be much better. So it, it's a it's a different type of capital raise. It's a lot more strategic. It's, it's targeting actual uh, bigger funds uh, who are keen on the thematic, but the, that we won't be in this rock in a hard place type situation that we have been in this latest raising where we just had to do it yeah. um, and we had no choice. Whereas later in the year, if we have sufficient appetite and the price is right, then we'll be able to do it on a much more relaxed basis. Yeah. Do you have any interest now or is there any... Um, discussions with uh, mid-tier or large cap mining companies to take out and buy out the Thursdays Gossen or Stably in general? Uh, at the moment, we're not having any discussions with any of the mid-tiers. Um, look, I, I think that the reality was, and I've mentioned in, in previous interviews, that my feeling was that there's no way that any of them would be interested until we had the resource out. So the resource is only out now little more than a week uh, and um, you know so now people will 
run the, run the ruler over it. We're, we're visiting a few sites um, now that COVID restrictions have lifted um, and that's a little bit of a slow burn. Uh, we are talking to a couple of groups about um, potentially joint venture on the deeper porphyry type of target. Um, so that's pretty much where we're at now. Yeah. Now, I mean, obviously everybody's disappointed and I'm sure there's some people out there who you know, are frustrated by um, you know, the market, they're frustrated with you, they're frustrated with everything going on. Um, clearly, we all have to take responsibility for our own investments and our own decisions. And so, you know, being mad at you, I think you've done you know, the best you can do with the information you had at the time and with the best interests of the company at heart. Is there anything you particularly want to say specifically to those investors who do have their knickers in or not at the moment and are quite frustrated and perhaps mad at you? Uh, do, you do you want to say anything to them? Well, I, I just reflect on you know, our previous experience at Integra during the global financial crisis, we were fully funded into the development of the Randall's Gold project. We didn't need any more cash. Everything was put away. Um, the share price went down to eight cents at that point in time. We built the project on time, under budget. And uh, three years after the financial crisis, we accepted uh, an offer from Silver Lake Resources um, for 46 cents. So um, we've seen this environment before where there's been irrational selling. Um, you know, the, I think if, if you, if the, the head of the Federal Reserve um, uh, uh, described the financial crisis or pre-financial crisis as uh, irrational exuberance, um, but it, Irrationality can go in both directions. And, and when Integra got sold off to eight cents, I think that was an, an example. Um, <clears throat> it came back. I'm certain that will come back as well. It's, it, for me personally, it's, it's like di incredibly disheartening that to think that at 15 cents, post a discovery, post drilling it out, <clears throat> after having produced a high quality resource, that <clears throat> excuse me, that the company was worth less than what we had spent in the discovery and drill out. Yeah. So that just does not make sense to me. It, you know, the, the grades are good. The resource is high quality. It's got a very large proportion of indicated, which has always been our objective is to, to ensure that we had that large proportion of indicated resources, higher confidence. So yeah, it's, it, it, it's a, it's a kick in the guts to have the market value you at that level. Um, but again, you kind of have to step back and acknowledge, okay, well, this is the, the world that we're in. The world that we were in eight weeks ago is not the same world that we're in now. Um, the Russians have invaded bloody Ukraine, bloody um, the, the lockdowns in, in China are affecting growth expectations, the inflation in the US is uh, prompting many to say that the US is going into recession. All of those are, are, are compounding into a, an environment where the copper price has gone down, but that hasn't stopped the cost escalations in the industry in terms of capital and operating costs. So it's just one of those market squeezes. You just have to roll with it. Um, put, you know, I'll be participating in the SPP subject to a, a, a waiver from the ASX that we've applied for um, to the mass, maximum extent that I can, um, just on the basis that uh, I personally feel and everybody needs to, to do their own advice and everybody takes their own counsel in terms of when to buy or sell. But I believe that the company is seriously undervalued at these prices. And so I'll take up my entitlement and just keep an open mind in terms of where this is likely to land once all the dust settles and we're in you know very uncertain times but life goes on as it did with integra and i'm certain that um you know we'll look back in in uh you know 18 months time and go geez that was a a tough period but we got through it with the the least amount of damage in terms of dilution and we can now look forward with some confidence. We've got a good solid asset uh, under our belts and, and you know, we just look forward in terms of, of what we can do to add further value. So that's pretty much where I'm at. It's uh, disappointing, absolutely disappointing. 
Um, we got crunched in terms of timing. Uh, that sometimes happens. Um, we didn't really have a choice in terms of when that resource came out, but then we had to come to market straight away and it, it was what it was. Yeah. Okay, well, we're almost running out of time. So I uh, just wanted to thank you again. I know this has obviously been incredibly hard for you. You have so many you know, family, friends, colleagues, shareholders on your, on your, on your back uh, to care about as well as running the company and doing all the, uh, the work that you do. So, you know, I personally want to thank you for everything. I know this is probably been the most uh, challenging time of your career. Uh, going through all this. So I can imagine the, uh, the stress you would under. Um, but uh, thank you very much for everything you're doing and the focus you've got to keep going. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you for keeping us informed. Yeah, thanks, Savannah. And, and look, I, I do really appreciate the support of, of shareholders and yourself. Um, you know, here at Stavely, everyone in the group is absolutely committed to to doing the right thing by shareholders. We're not the type of group, we're not swanning around the world, you know, business class going to every conference available or known to man. Um, we're really focused on trying to add value for shareholders. We are substantial shareholders in our own right. So we're perfectly aligned with, with everybody else. Uh, it's been a disappointing period, but we're confident that we can bounce back. And, and yeah, it, it is a large responsibility, as you say, <laughs> many friends and family, all of that sort of thing, and ourselves included, we're probably our harshest critics. Um, but, uh, you know, we've just got to do the right thing. We think that ultimately, if you continue to do the right thing, it'll all work out in the end and, and you know, we'll, we'll prevail in terms of outcomes. So we just got to keep, you know, head down, bum up and keep adding value. Yeah, I think it's all you can do right now. Indeed. All right. Well, happy drilling. Uh, good luck with the, uh, with the drilling in September and to the end of the year. Hopefully we can uh, shore up that, uh, that mineralization even further. Yeah, and, and just keep an eye out for that expiration announcement that where we'll detail all of our targets moving forward and what we rank you know, in terms of priority and, and what we're going to do with them. Should we be expecting many announcements anytime soon or are you kind of in a quiet period now that we're uh, in the winter? Uh, well, you'll get that expiration announcement and then the programs will resume in September. So Really? Okay, there, so I'm not there, likely to get more announcements of drilling results now until uh, October, November. There's, a, there's um, a couple of results that we do need to clean up in terms of an announcement. Um, so that will come out and, and the expiration target stuff will come out as well. Okay, great. Well, thanks again for your time and uh, I'll let you get back to your day. Thank you. Appreciate it, Savannah. Have a good day. Cheers, mate. Bye.